So this is the Focus FE20 laser engraver. This is my first laser engraver, so I've been learning all about laser engraving and really, really cool, really excited to see what I can engrave with this. Let's go. Hey, welcome back to RC with Adam. This is the Focus FE20 laser engraver. It was sent to me from Focus to test out and make this review for you guys. Now, you may know Focus for their 3D printer, the Odin 5, which I have reviewed and do enjoy very much. Well, it turns out they also make a laser engraver. The FE20 costs around $220 to $280, depending on where you buy it from and is competing with other entry-level lasers, such as the Ortur Laser Master 2 S2, which I know nothing about, but it's in the same price range, and I'm just kind of giving you that as a reference. This video is going to help you decide if this is a product on which you want to spend your hard-earned cash cash money dollars. Now, one thing I love to do on this channel is not waste your time. So here's basically the bottom line right now. Based on my generally positive experience with the FE20 so far, I am inclined to say that I would recommend it to a friend who is looking for a cheap and simple laser engraver with a large working area and enough power to cut through soft and thin materials like thin wood or fabrics or paper. But then, this is my first ever CNC laser. It's like freaking magic. And I didn't even pay for it. It was sent to me by Focus. So I don't feel that I'm in a good place to steer you in either direction. Instead, my goal is simply to share my experience so far and to give you enough information to make your own educated decision. I also have four really important pieces of information that you really will want to know if you're just getting started with laser engravers. Like this is like kind of foundational stuff. So if you haven't bought a laser engraver yet and you're just getting into it, you're gonna wanna hear about these important points. And we're gonna cover that right after I mention the sponsor for today's video, which is PCBWay. I'm guessing you enjoy DIY projects, so this might interest you. PCBWay specializes in custom printed circuit boards that's what PCB stands for, and electronics components. You can design a circuit board, send the design file to PCB Way, and have them create it to your specifications. You can choose tons of different options like multiple layers, thicknesses, flexible boards, and a bunch more. You can even select all the components and have them solder it to the board for you so it will be ready to roll and beep and boop and bop when it arrives at your door, which is pretty cool. Not only that though, they also offer rapid prototyping services like 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and even injection molding. So if you are a maker like me uh, and don't have access to specialized manufacturing, this could be a great option for you. I'll put a link to pcbway.com in the description below this video in case you're interested and let them know RC with Adam sent you. By the way, PCB Way has no affiliation with Focus as far as I know. Now, like I said, I'm brand new to CNC lasers, also known as engravers or cutters. So for this video, I won't be directly comparing the FE20 to other brands and models because I just don't know enough about them. Nor will I get super nerdy into the tech specs because honestly, I just don't care about the super duper tech specs right now because I'm just trying to learn how this whole process works. And if you're a beginner, you probably don't care either. So we're gonna kinda skip over that right now and just stick with the basics. So for this video, I will focus primarily on my experience so far and what I want other beginners to know about the FE20. If you are looking to get into laser machines and you don't know anything about them, like I didn't like a month ago, here are the most important things I want you to know right away. Number one, laser engravers are super cool. You probably already knew that, which is why you're interested in getting one, but it's like an instant customization machine, especially compared to 3D printing. The learning curve is not very steep and there's a much quicker payoff for your effort. So if you don't really have a, a lot of patience to like set every little detail thing up and like you just want something to happen, you know, you want some laser action going on. Start. Look how fast it's going. What? What? Wow, like how cool is that? And these aren't even my gloves. Well, this is a pretty good route to take. Here are some items that I engraved just to give you an idea of what you can do with this laser and you know, kind of laser engraving and stuff in general. Right. 
I did some see, tests on wood, leather, a mirror, which is what super kind of cool, stinks, paper, but... different types of metal, Whoa. like painted metal, and even clothing. So yeah, it's super cool. Okay, the second most important thing I want you to know is safety. You absolutely need to wear laser safety glasses. This isn't like so that you're you don't get dust in your eyes or something. This is so that you like don't go blind if in case the laser shines into your eyes. Now the kit does come with a cheap pair, but they are minimum quality and you will want to replace those with a better, more effective pair ASAP. So maybe you're thinking, oh, well, I only need laser glasses if I'm like shining laser you know, beams around. Well, the intense light produced by the laser, even the indirect light that bounces off the material being engraved, can damage your vision if your eyes are not protected with safety glasses that are specifically made to protect against laser light. And the, the wavelength for this laser is listed as 450 nanometers. So it's kind of like a bluish purplish color. Anytime the laser is firing, you must wear the eye protection. Now, there are some unclear and not very prominent warnings about this in the manual, but this is something I wish Focus and all other laser CNC manufacturers would make abundantly clear, especially when this is specifically marketed at beginners who will most likely know nothing about lasers. And that was me until about a month ago. But you know, telling people that they could go blind if they misuse your product is not exactly a big selling point, so that's probably why it's not emphasized. But that's still inexcusable. Another important safety factor is fire. These lasers literally burn into the material and can create enough heat for it to catch fire. So do not ever leave the laser running unattended. Okay, the next thing safety is fumes. Lasering, is that a thing? La Do people say that? Lasering? Lasering can produce a lot of smoke and other fumes, and some materials will produce harmful gases and fumes when heated. So do not laser anything with chlorine, such as PVC or vinyl. I was really disappointed to hear this, but you know, I also don't want to die, because um, apparently it creates uh, chlorine gas, which is deadly and bad for your health. And also, Plain old smoke is very common, especially when burning into wood. So uh, see the description below this video for uh, links to helpful resources about laser safety. So you will need a dedicated space like a workshop or garage with lots of airflow and or a dedicated ventilation system. Okay, third most important thing is I just want you to understand the limitations of laser engravers in like particularly in this case. So you might have noticed that I'm mostly using the word engraver and not cutter. And that's because this laser really isn't designed for cutting anything more than thick paper or thin wood, think like balsa wood or plywood um, and other soft materials. I haven't tried cutting thin plywood yet because I just haven't had any on hand and I have not yet needed thin plywood for any projects that I'm working on right now. Don't expect it to work on hard steel or any surface that causes the light to diffract, uh, such as uh, shiny surfaces or even white foam. It won't cut through it. It just doesn't have the power. We'll talk more about testing with different surfaces later. And the fourth and final most important thing I want you to know is that the FE20 must be connected to a computer running the laser software while it is engraving, although it does not need internet access. Now, the manual does mention an option to load a file into the FE20 and engrave while disconnected from a computer, but I haven't tried that yet. And anyway, I want to be able to make quick changes to the burn settings while I'm still learning how to use the software and everything. In my case, I had to move an old PC into the garage with the laser. This is not ideal because I don't really want a big PC in the garage. And also I don't have internet access in the garage, so I can't download files and engrave them right away, which is a pain. Okay, so those are the four most important things that I just wanted you to know about uh, lasers in general and then also as it applies to this particular laser that we're talking about. All right, let's get into the FE20 and the whole process from assembling it to actually using it and all that stuff. Overall, the FE20 was easy to set up and get working. One of Focus's main marketing points is that it comes 80% already assembled. However, I did run into a few issues and it took me much longer than the advertised time to get it going. 
uh, not including the time it took me just to film the whole process. The box is actually quite compact and very well padded with foam. I was actually pretty impressed with how well it was packed. It comes with everything you need to get it running, aside from a computer and your laser software of choice. More on that later. Again, I want to make an important note about the safety glasses. Apparently, it is typical for laser CNC makers to include with their machines the cheapest possible safety glasses, and some people have reported them to be dangerously ineffective and prone to breaking. These ones appear to be effective, but are definitely low quality. Mine suddenly fell apart when the temple screw backed out. Whoa, my glasses just came apart. That's not cool, bro. And you will want to upgrade to even just moderately expensive glasses. All right, let's talk about the assembly. The assembly is fairly simple, much easier than assembling a 3D printer, but the directions are not very clear, so it took me longer than needed to make sure I had everything assembled correctly. And we're gonna tighten this. Take the laser module and put it on here. Bam, and then we're gonna take our screws, or our nuts and bolts. Some room here. So one of these connections needs to go to the X-axis stop right here, or limit switch. Most importantly, I noticed that the X-axis extrusion, and that's the metal part that the laser head is mounted to, and it spans the width of the frame was not perfectly perpendicular to the y-axis extrusions. So I had to loosen the timing or drive belts and roll both sets of x-axis wheels to the end of the y-axis extrusion to make sure they were even. And then I took up the slack in the belts and tightened them back down. I'm gonna get it as loose as I can. And then See if I can just pull the belt out. Yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna give myself some slack so that I am not contacting the, uh, the gear, the drive gear right here. Side note, at first I thought the frame plates were made of wood, which would be weird, but they are actually acrylic. The brown color is just the protective paper that the manufacturer did not bother to remove. Like I said, it's fairly simple to put together, but some quality pictures would help. So here are some shots of me assembling this and some close-ups of the different components for you to use as a reference. Once assembled, assuming you've done it correctly, you can plug in the power supply and connect it to your computer via the provided USB cable. Speaking of the computer, you'll need a software designed for laser engravers and cutters to allow you to tell your laser what to engrave and how to engrave it. If you're familiar with 3D printers, this is analogous to a slicer software. You can load .jpeg, .png, and many other image files into the software for engraving and controlling factors like the technique it uses to make the image and how light or dark you want the image based on the power settings. And of course, a lot of other stuff as well. You can also create shapes and text directly in the software. The two main software options are Laser GRBL, also pronounced gerbil or gerbil, I guess, and Lightburn. Basically, Laser GRBL is free but doesn't run on Mac OS. Lightburn does support Mac OS and is known for being easier to use and more feature rich than Laser GRBL, but it does cost $60 for a license, but you can do a 30 day free trial. Since I use a MacBook and after watching different tutorials, Lightburn was a no brainer decision for me. However, I was not, and am still currently not, 
able to get the FE20 to connect with the Lightburn software while using my Mac. It may be an issue with a driver. I did try installing, and I believe successfully, the driver for the Mac that comes with the USB drive from Focus, but my computer or Lightburn still does not recognize the FE20 when I plug it in. If you are dealing with the same issue, or even better, if you know how to fix it, please let us know in the comments section down below this video. Disappointed, I dusted off my desktop PC running Windows 10 or 11 or something and installed Lightburn. I was able to connect the FE20 and control it without any further issues, and I set up the device settings just as the Focus tutorial videos show. Success! Finally! Now that I can control the laser in Lightburn, it's just a matter of placing whatever I want to engrave within the work area and focusing the laser. This is done by simply twisting the laser's lens bezel either clockwise or counterclockwise to make the dot of light as small as possible. That's the goal. We'll need to actually turn the laser on or fire it so that we can see the change in the focus. To do this, we're going to go into Lightburn and in the device settings, enable the fire option and set the power level very low. I set mine to 3%. I don't know if the laser poses much of a hazard at this low level, but I put my safety glasses on anytime the laser is on. Now we can fire the laser and place the black focusing card that came with the FE20 under the beam. And we want to do this at the same height as whatever material we're engraving. And then we can twist the lens to get the smallest dot of light possible. And the card is black to help absorb the light and make the main spot of light easier to see. Since the FE20 uses a laser with a fixed Z axis, meaning the laser head stays at the same vertical height, you need to adjust the laser focus anytime the material height changes if you want to get the sharpest results. Once we're done focusing, we can click the fire button again to turn off the laser beam. Okay, now we have it assembled, connected to light burn, and focused. Now it's time to actually use the dang thing. Now, when it comes to actually using this thing, what you really need to learn is how to use the operating software, which in this case is Lightburn. Since we're focusing on the FE20, I'm not going to cover the ins and outs of Lightburn in this video. Lightburn has some good tutorial videos on their website, which helped me a lot, to which I will leave a link in the description below this video. After watching a few of the Lightburn tutorials, it was very easy to get a handle on the basics and start playing with the settings. I will say, basically, it comes down to speed and power. For each material you want to burn or cut, there will be an optimal balance between how fast the laser head moves and the power level of the laser. The trick is finding that balance. And I'm still learning, so I can't really offer any great life-changing tips on that yet. For my first burn, I started with a grayscale test chart on a scrap piece of cardboard. We probably need way more speed or less power, some kind of combination of that. So we'll probably stop this test in just a little bit here. But this was pretty boring and not very satisfying. I mean, useful, but not that great. Also, the information only applies to that material, which is cardboard. So 10 to 20% power. So really nothing, nothing really starts to happen until 20% power. Still, this was good practice though. But for a more immediately gratifying experience, I suggest you just start by playing with the shapes and text that you can make in Lightburn or upload one of the test images from the Focus USB drive that comes with the FE20. You can use the default settings and then play with adjusting the speed and power level to get different results. For reference, here are the results that I got with different materials and settings. I used the tiger test image on a slice of cedar log. And you'll be like, whoa. Or something like that. And I'm going to start airing stuff out. Because that's going to make a lot of smoke. Yeah, an air assist is definitely a good idea. 
Wood is a super easy material to work with and you probably already have some scraps you can use for your first burns. Leather. The settings for this weren't very good, but this is such a cool way to mark your gloves. I just made a AT for my initials right there. Look how fast it's going. What? What? Wow, like how cool is that? And these aren't even my gloves, but you know, uh, if they were my gloves, that would be great. Oh, it's kind of smudging. Ooh, I guess that's all the burnt stuff. So I'd have to clean that off. Jeans. This gives the jeans a sort of bleached or faded appearance, which may or may not be your style, but either way, it's still pretty neat. T-shirt. Now this is not a 100% cotton t-shirt. I think it has some sort of blend because it kind of melted and I, I definitely went way too powerful for the first time. Uh, but the second one turned out much better and I think I should have slowed it down to get a little bit sharper results on the small details, but definitely very cool. A mirror. Once I learned that you can engrave the backside of mirrors to have it show through the front, I just had to try it because this is such a cool look. And you can see that the image ends up reversed. So the next time I do it, I just need to mirror the image in Lightburn and then actually burn it onto the mirror. So keep that in mind. Oh, oh. I forgot it's back. It's backwards. Okay, it's backwards. So I forgot about that. But it does show through. That is so cool, man. That is just so cool. Oh my gosh. But yeah, it's it's backwards or it's reversed. Cardstock paper. This is an easy and satisfying material to engrave. With a low power level, it would just kind of make the paper a light cream color and kind of fade it. And at a higher power, it would actually engrave into the paper so you could feel the indentation of the lettering, which is pretty cool. And at max power and slower speed, it can cleanly cut through the paper and cut out shapes. 800 millimeters per minute, 100% power. And we're just gonna do a basic circle. Nice. So I made this little hang tag as an example. Yeah, so it's not really, it's not darker, but it is actually engraved. That's really cool. I didn't realize you could like actually engrave the paper like this. I tried a couple of different metals. They really need to be painted for the laser's energy to absorb into the metal. Oh wow, it's really turning black. If it's shiny, it just deflects everywhere and doesn't work. And if it's a hard metal, I don't think this laser is gonna burn into it very well. This test was not super comprehensive, but basically, you know, soft metals, aluminum, that kind of thing, that's probably gonna be best for engraving. Wow. Okay, let's talk so about let's cutting. I was really hoping to use the FE20 to cut through foam Whoa. board, like the Adams Ready Board Whoa. from the Dollar Tree for making RC airplanes. Oh, it didn't go through though. Much to my disappointment, this through. laser just can't cut cleanly through a piece of 3 16 inch foam core, which seems crazy because it's a freaking laser. But as I understand it, the power. white foam go. causes the laser light to diffract and there is just not enough focused energy to cut all well, the way through. Like it's definitely this is why a time. different type of laser called a CO2 laser is actually used for cutting this and other types of material. CO2 lasers use an infrared beam, 
which is invisible to the naked eye and doesn't diffract in the same way as a diode laser, which is what the FE-20 is. Oh, I heard something. I heard it make a sound. Oh, The FE-20 can cut through the top of the paper, which is more dense, so that may still be useful for getting the exact shape of the airplane part and then cutting it out with a razor, so I may do that. I'm fairly certain that the foam used for this foam core is safe to cut with a laser, but if you have researched that and found that it is not, please leave a comment and let us know below. Again, make sure you have good ventilation whenever you're burning or cutting with the laser. Open frame design. Here's another important thing to keep in mind about the FE20. It's what's known as an open frame design, meaning there is no enclosure. This is partly what keeps the price down and also allows you to get a large working area of 410 millimeters by 370 millimeters for far less than it would cost if it was all enclosed. But this does mean that you'll need to come up with your own method for fume and smoke ventilation. And also there is no light shielding built in, which means you and anyone else in the vicinity of the laser will definitely need to wear eye protection while it's running. I plan to build my own enclosure and I've already ordered special acrylic laser shield panels to use as a window. Building my own enclosure will cost less than buying one, but it will also require more time to build. I like building things, so that's not as big of a deal for me, but that may be a factor to consider when you're buying your first CNC laser. Power rating. Another important thing to keep in mind when researching laser machines don't be fooled when manufacturers advertise the laser's input wattage for marketing purposes. Input wattage is how much electrical power it takes to run the laser, which can easily be four times as much as the laser output. The output rating is more important for determining how powerful the laser actually is. The FE20 li lists a 20 watt input power, but only a five watt output power. I have no way of verifying this and I don't have any other lasers to compare it to, but don't expect it to engrave hard metals or excel at cutting anything more than thick paper or thin wood. That said, I haven't pushed this thing to its limits, so the jury is still out on what the maximum this thing can handle. So now that you know more about the FE20 and what it can and can't do, should you buy one? Well, I wish I could just give you a quick yes or no, but I don't currently know enough about laser engravers and all the different models out there to really know if this is the best option for you. I'm not going to pretend that I do. Instead, this is where I'll hand it off to you. If you are currently using the FE20, please leave a comment down below and let us know how your experience has been with it. Or even better, if you are an experienced laser CNC enthusiast, please share with us your seasoned perspective on this newcomer to the entry-level laser engraver market. All right. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Now get out there and make something. We'll get, I mean, we get bars. We get our goggles.